Welcome to Discovery Church. It's time for the message, so junior churchers are dismissed. Children through grade 5 can head downstairs for a lesson. If you don't have a basement where you live, then you can just pretend to go downstairs. I'm just trying to make things sound somewhat normal in this time when it feels like any things are anything but normal. I heard about a pastor who went to call on one of his members. This was in the rural part of Iowa and he went off to visit one of his parishioners, who was a middle-aged woman. He went to the door, and he rang the doorbell, but there was no response, so he rang the doorbell again. He could see there was a light on in the house, but again there was no response. He walked around the house, and he could hear a radio, and he saw that another light was on. This is strange, he thought, so he just decided to leave a note. Revelation 3, verse 20 came to mind, and he wrote a little note to her, saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them, and they with me. He thought this was a very appropriate verse, and he put it through the mailbox and walked away. The following Sunday, he saw the woman in church, and she came up to him and just handed him a little note. When he looked at his note, he saw that she also had written a Bible verse on her note. She had written Genesis 3, verse 10. That verse says, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. I guess that story shows that you can find a Bible verse for just about anything. Today, I want to help you find some Bible verses that will help you defeat this thing called worry. In the conversations that I've had with people about the coronavirus, they've told me about their worries. When I go out for a walk, I can see the worry on people's faces. These are uncertain times, and we're in uncharted territory, so we often feel out of control, and that can lead us to this thing called worry. If I came up to you and said, sit down for a few minutes because I want to teach you how to worry, I think most of you would say, I think I can skip that lesson because I already know how to worry. In fact, I'm pretty good at worrying And in fact, if they held an Olympic event for worrying, then I might just win a gold medal. I worry about my kids, I worry about my aging parents, I worry about our finances, and I worry about where to find my next roll of toilet paper. These are challenging times. Most of us don't need any teaching on how to worry. We simply need some teaching on how to turn off the worry button that keeps us awake at night. So where do we find this kind of teaching? We find that teaching from the words of Jesus. Jesus is our good shepherd, and he loves us more than we will ever know. This is the teaching that Jesus gives us about this thing called worry. It's found in Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. When you look back at verse 25, Jesus simply says, Do not worry. So how do you react to that statement? Do you find yourself thinking, sure, that's easy for him to say, but he doesn't know about all the the problems in my life that I'm dealing with right now? 
If you ever find yourself feeling that way, then remember that Jesus does know about every problem in your life, but he still wants to tell you that it's foolish to worry. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't just tell us not to worry. He also tells us why we shouldn't worry. So why shouldn't we give in to this thing called worry? The first reason is this. We don't give in to worry because worry is unproductive. Maybe we could defend our habit of worrying if we could prove that it was helpful or productive. But it's not. It's like a screen door on a submarine. It just doesn't do much good. Jesus said this in verse 27, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Jesus is saying that worry is unproductive. You can't add a single hour to your life by worrying. Worrying can't help you grow an inch taller or an inch shorter. Worry can't really change anything in your life. In fact, the only thing worry can change is you. And that's because worry can make you miserable. Have you ever thought about how much time you have wasted on worrying in your life? One research study revealed that we spend over five years of our lives worrying. That's over 14 hours every week. Now, some of you are probably worried about how much time you waste worrying. Think of all the good things you could accomplish with those 14 hours each week that you waste on worrying. And let's not forget that some of you are overachievers. You waste way more than 14 hours each week on worry. It's good for us to realize how unproductive worry is. Worry cannot change anything in your past. It's already done. Your past is in your past, so why are you worried about it? And then worry cannot control your future. If you worry about the future, it won't change anything. So if you worry about what you can't change in the past and you can't change the future, then what can you do? It simply messes up today. Worry can make you miserable and it can drain you of your strength. Proverbs 12:25 says, "Worry weighs a person down." Many of us know this from experience. When you have been worrying about something all day long, then you feel like an extra weight has been attached to your body and you've been dragging it around all day. Jesus gives us this teaching on worry because he wants to lift our burdens and he wants us to have a heart filled with peace. Second, we don't give in to worry because we trust God to provide what we need. One translation of verse 31 says, So do not worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Jesus says that unbelievers are going to run around worrying about a lot of different things in life. But as God's children, God knows all of our needs, and he will give us everything that we need. And let's remember, there is a big difference between needs and wants. We can trust God to provide for all of our needs. One way to look at this is to remember how God has already provided for the biggest need that each one of us has in our lives. When Jesus died on the cross for you, he solved your biggest problem. You don't have any bigger problem in life than the need to have your sins forgiven. God handled that problem when he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, and he offered you the free gift of eternal life because of what Jesus has done. If God has already taken care of the biggest problem in your life, then why would you ever doubt that he can handle the smaller problems in life? That would be like saying, God, I'm going to trust you with where... I'm going to spend eternity, but I'm not sure I can trust you with this problem that I'm facing next week. That makes absolutely no sense. Jesus is telling us that worry is unproductive and that we should trust God to provide what we need. And then Jesus tells us that there is something positive we can do. 
Instead of wasting those 14 hours each week on worry, we need to focus our thoughts elsewhere. In verse 33, Jesus said, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. It seems like pretty much every day we get an update from the president on what we should do, and we get an update from Governor Waltz on what we should do. It's good for us to listen to our government leaders, and the Bible says it's important that we pray for our leaders. Some people are almost obsessed with the news, and they can't wait to hear the latest update from national leaders or state leaders. What would happen if we were just as eager to hear from a different leader each day? Jesus is the King of Kings, and his wisdom far surpasses any earthly leader. I think our worry could be replaced with peace if we turned our eyes on the Prince of Peace each day. I think the old hymn has lyrics that say it very well. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I love the words of that song because they are so true. When you find yourself feeling weary and troubled, it is so helpful to turn your eyes upon Jesus. And then all the things that you were so worried about, they seem to grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. As I've been thinking about our church family here at Discovery, I've been trying to think of ways we could stay connected and keep encouraging each other through all of this. And one big way we can do this is through prayer. Keep praying for each other and make sure that you share any needs you have with our prayer chain so that our whole church family can be praying for you. As I was praying about this, I thought of another exercise that could be helpful. I thought it could be helpful if we shared with each other some scriptures or songs that have brought us comfort and hope. Maybe you have a Christian song that brought you a lot of comfort when you went through a dark valley in your life. What is that song that brought you comfort? And is there a certain line in that song that really spoke to you? Maybe another person will share a special scripture that they've been focusing on during this time of uncertainty. What is that scripture and why does that scripture give you hope? If you send me a song that has brought you comfort, it might be a hymn that is 200 years old or it might be a song that was written last year. Let me know what songs and scriptures have brought you hope, and I will share some of those in the future. I think this is one of the ways that we can encourage each other, so you can email those songs and scriptures to me. I like that exercise because it helps us focus on the right things. Worry is so unproductive, and it's a common enemy that we often struggle with, Our hearts can be filled with worry, but I'd much rather have our hearts be filled with worship. I think these songs and scriptures will help us worship. Jesus ends this teaching by saying this in verse 34. He says, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do you find yourself agreeing with that verse? We don't need to borrow trouble. God's going to give you enough grace for today. Some of you might be doing just fine today, but you're already worried about tomorrow. I was talking with Brian, and he said, Sure, the grocery stores are open today, but what if they close the grocery stores tomorrow and we have to start hunting for our food? I don't even know where Pop-Tarts live. One writer said, There are two days of every week that you should never worry about, yesterday and tomorrow because you can't do anything about them. You don't worry about the future until you successfully learn to manage today. Some of you aren't doing that good a job on that one. Why are you borrowing trouble and worrying about something that's happening in two weeks? When you think about it, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. 
Let me say that again. Today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. And yesterday, you messed up yesterday because you were worrying about today. And today, you're messing up today because you're worrying about tomorrow. It really doesn't make any sense to do that. That's why Jesus tells us to only live our life one day at a time. I love the message paraphrase of verse 34. It says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. As you think about today's teaching on this thing called worry, I want you to remember who gave this teaching. It comes straight from the mouth of Jesus. And Jesus has identified himself as the Good Shepherd in John's Gospel. In John 10, verse 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what Jesus did for you on the cross. He gave his life for you on the cross so that your sins could be forgiven. And if he loved you enough to die for you, then he certainly loves you enough to lead you through this time of uncertainty. There is a reason why people love Psalm 23 so much. It's good to remember that the Lord is my shepherd. And it's good to remember that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This time of uncertainty with the coronavirus can seem like a dark valley, but let's remember that we are never alone in this valley. You will find comfort when you remember that Jesus is your good shepherd. I think it would be wise for us to pray the prayer that David prayed in Psalm 28. In that psalm, David prayed, Come, Lord, save us and bless us, be our shepherd, and always carry us in your arms. I love that picture of Jesus being a shepherd and carrying us in his arms. Do you remember when you were a little kid and your parents would take you on a long outing? Maybe you went fishing or you went to the amusement park. You had a lot of fun, but by the end of the day, your little legs were all worn out, and that's when mom or dad had to carry you to the car. You don't remember the trip back home, but somehow you arrived safely back home. You know, that's what can happen with us now as, a, as adults when we face a week that is just plain exhausting. Maybe the daily updates about the coronavirus are wearing you out and you're tired and you feel like you can't put one foot in front of the other. That's when it's perfectly fine to go to God and say, Lord, I'm just worn out from all of this stuff. I'm exhausted and I need you to carry me right now. Jesus is happy to hear those words from us. And he says, I'm your shepherd, and I will care for you, and I will bless you. I will protect you, and I will save you. I will give you discipline when you need discipline. I will guide you, and I will defend you. And when you are worn out and tired, then I will carry you. As we end this message, I want you to remember that God has invited you to give your worries and your anxiety to him. God knows what you've been worrying about this past week, and he wants you to give those worries to him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. The reason you can cast all your anxiety on him is because he cares for you, and he can see what these worries are doing to your life. He wants to take those worries and replace them with his peace. In his book, Worry Less and Live More, Robert Morgan illustrates the fact that many in our society are very conscious of their anxiety. He writes, Amazon keeps track of your highlights. When ebook owners mark sentences, 
The online retailer knows what you mark and they record it. Recently, Amazon released a list of the most popular passages in some of their best-selling books, such as the Hunger Games and the Harry Potter series. They also released the most highlighted passage in the Bible. I expected America's favorite scripture to be John 3.16, or Psalm 23, or the Lord's Prayer. But none of those passages came in first. The most highlighted passage from the Bible was this scripture from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. That scripture says, Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. I can't think of a better scripture for us to end this message on, so let me read that scripture again, and then I'll close our time in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, Offer up your prayers and requests to God. And then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for our entire Discovery Church family. I know that in this time of uncertainty, it's been so easy for us to focus on some things that make us worry. But Lord, I'm praying for all of us that you'll remind us how unproductive worry is. And Lord, instead of the worry, I just pray that we can experience your peace. You've invited us to cast our cares and worries on you. And that's what I pray that we will do today and every day. I thank you that you are the good shepherd who will carry us when we're exhausted. I thank you that you are a, a God who can give us a peace that only you can give. So Lord, fill us with your peace. Help us to be lights shining in the darkness. We trust you, Lord, to lead us through this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week.